Something has to change. And, and one of the wives of one of the victims, uh, he had been selling um, things to, to raise money for the soccer team he coaches, shot in the chest. Uh, his wife asked me, why, why is this happening in our country right now? Why will this continue to happen? How do we, how do we change this? And, and Jake, I've got to tell you, in, in addition to universal background checks, in addition to ending the sales of, of weapons of war into our communities, in addition to red flag laws, we've got to acknowledge the hatred, the open racism that we're seeing. There's an environment of it in the United States. Uh, we see it on Fox News. We see it on the Internet. But we also see it from our commander in chief. And he is encouraging this. He doesn't just tolerate it. He encourages it, calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals, warning of an invasion at our border, um, seeking to ban all people of, of one religion. Folks are responding to this. It doesn't just offend us. It encourages the kind of violence that we're seeing, including in my hometown of El Paso yesterday. So I, I, I want to talk about that in a second, but I do want to share this picture of you visiting with a victim uh, named Rose, uh, Rosemary, um, who you said was shot in the chest, but she is doing well after surgery. Obviously, we want to bring as much attention um, to uh, the victims of this uh, as much as possible. So I, I do want to talk about how we can stop it in one second, but if you could tell me about that moment meeting Rosemary. You know, I'd, I'd met her son on the flight back from Las Vegas. He approached me on the airplane, told me that he'd just learned that his mother had been shot in the chest. His grandmother had been shot in the stomach. His uh, great aunt had also been shot. He was flying back to El Paso. Um, and uh, he asked if, if I would join him by going to University Medical Center, where I met Rosemary. Um, both of her lungs punctured, um, her lungs being drained as I was talking to her. Big smile on her face, just extraordinary courage. Uh, not only was she shot, but, but her mom, her aunt was also shot, her family around her. These extraordinary caregivers at University Medical Center, nurses who had been working 12, 14 hours uh, already, doctors who'd been seeing uh, multiple patients with multiple gunshot wounds, um, just um, really moved me and, and makes me so incredibly proud of Rosemary, her family, uh, families all across El Paso right now who should never have to demonstrate this kind of courage and yet nonetheless are, are doing so. Um, met families who, who have not heard from a family member and, and fear the worst, have called Del Sol Medical Center, have called UMC, don't know where their mom or dad are, fear that they are one of the, the at least 20 who, who are dead already, um, and, and are resolved to ensure that this changes. And, and I heard that from so many people yesterday. They, they want this to change. This cannot be the normal for the United States of America. And I know this community is going to do everything within our power to make sure that it is not. So, um, Congressman, you wrote on Twitter and said publicly in El Paso, President Trump's racism does not just offend our sensibilities, it fundamentally changes the character of this country and it leads to violence. Um, now, the document that this terrorist in El Paso that law enforcement is investigating whether or not he actually posted this document, which refers to Latinos coming to the country as an invasion, which, as you noted, is um, a language that we've heard from, from the President of the United States. It also says, uh, and I know, you know, it, it's hard to make sense of, of any of this stuff, but it also says that um, he had this ideology before President Trump. He kind of anticipated, assuming this document's real, the alleged terrorist um, anticipated that people would, would blame President Trump for it and said, uh, I felt this way before President Trump. I don't know the, the point that you're trying to make here, Jake, but it, it's pretty obvious to me and anyone who's listened to the president and will look at the facts that his anti-immigrant rhetoric, uh, not just the things that I cited, but calling asylum seekers animals or an infestation. Now, you might describe a cockroach or termites as an infestation, something less than human. You might hear someone in the Third Reich describe uh, a given people based on their characteristic as an infestation or subhuman. But that's what the President of the United States is doing right now. And it's not just with Mexican immigrants conflating Congresswoman Ilhan Omar with the terrorists from 9-11, um, encouraging that chanting in North Carolina of, of send her back. Um, let's not mince words right now. This president is encouraging greater racism and, and not just the racist rhetoric, but, but the violence that so often follows 
Um, this shooter in the manifesto cites in part for his inspiration the shooter in Christchurch, New Zealand, who cites Donald Trump as, as his inspiration. Um, th this anti-immigrant rhetoric, and, and again, it is not just President Trump, but he's certainly as the person in the position of greatest public trust in power, most responsible for it. This is Fox News. This is what we're seeing on the internet. This is the, the toleration of intolerance and hatred and racism in this country. This is what is causing what we are seeing here today. And it will continue to happen unless we call it out and unless we change it. The FBI director, Christopher Wray, ha has warned Congress about the increasing threat of white supremacy in the past. I, I want you to take a listen to something that FBI Director Ray, <coughs> Ray said in, in April of this year. We've seen uh, an increase in uh, the reporting of hate crimes and the FBI's own number of hate crime cases have increased. The danger, I think, uh, of white supremacist uh, violent extremism or any other kind of violent extremism um, is, of course, significant. Uh, we assess that it's a persistent, uh, pervasive threat. If the kinds of shootings we've seen in El Paso uh, or in California, uh, in which the individual there was suspected to have uh, white supremacist ideology, uh, and other white supremacist murders, uh, the Tree of Life Synagogue in, in Pittsburgh, and on and on, if those were Muslim men committing those crimes, how do you think Congress would be reacting as opposed to the fact that it is white supremacists committing these crimes? They weren't Muslim men committing those I know, crimes. I know, I know. I don't that's, know that's, how that's, Congress... That, that, would, my, my point is, so, so is there not a let's double focus standard on what here? what the problem is. They're, they're that's what I'm saying. Men. That's what I'm they're, saying, they're, yeah. Well... Yeah, well, so, but let's, let's focus on the problem that the FBI director has called out to members of Congress and to this country. We, we have a problem with white nationalist terrorism in the United States of America today. So, so I don't, I don't want to, to confuse people about what is going on or use a hypothetical about what if this was somebody else from, from a different background or, or profile. Th th these are white men motivated by the kind of fear that this president traffics in, you know, the mosque in Victoria, Texas was burned to the ground on the same day that President Trump signed his order attempting to ban Muslim travel to the United States of America. When he says after Charlottesville that Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis are very fine people, uh, the commander in chief is sending a very public signal to the rest of this country about what is permissible and in fact even what he encourages to happen. So, so let's connect the dots here on what is happening and why it is happening and who is responsible for this right now and the fact that it's going to take all of us, Republicans, Democrats, independents alike, rising up, standing up to be counted uh, against what this president is doing, against this white nationalist racism, against this violence and getting this country back. They are saying that our differences are in fact dangerous. If you're a Muslim, you're, you're inherently dangerous. If you are uh, an immigrant, you are inherently dangerous. If you are an asylum seeker, you are invading this country, you are an infestation. Um, those words have very real consequences. You don't get mass shootings like these. You don't torch mosques. You don't put kids in cages until you have a president who's given people permission to do that. And that's exactly what's happening in the United States of America today. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to confuse anybody. I I was, I was trying to point out that there seems a glaring double standard in how law enforcement and Congress talks about these incidents. These are, these are white supremacist terrorist acts over and over and over in which people are being murdered. Uh, and I was trying to offer a hypothetical. If it were a different group, I feel like it would be a red alarm, you know, fire, a four alarm fire. Uh, but but l let me move on because during um, one of the debates, uh, your 2020 opponent, uh, Governor Jay Inslee of Washington, said that President Trump is a, quote, white nationalist. That was a fairly stark accusation. Do you agree with that? Do you think President Trump is a white nationalist? Yes, I, I do. And again, uh, from some of the record that I just recited to you, the, the things that he has said, both as a, a candidate uh, and then as the president of the United States, this cannot be uh, open for, for debate. And, and you, as well as I, have a responsibility to call that out to make sure 
that the American people understand what is being done in their name by the person who holds the highest position of public trust in this land. He, he does not even pretend to respect our differences or to uh, understand that we are all created equal. He is saying that some people are inherently defective or dangerous, reminiscent of something that you might hear in the Third Reich, not something that you expect in the United States of America based on their religion, based on their sexual orientation, based on their immigration status, based on the countries that they come from, calling those in Africa shithole nations and saying that he'd like to have more immigration from Nordic countries, the whitest place on planet Earth today. So, so again, let's be very clear about what is causing this and who the president is. He is an open, avowed racist and is encouraging more racism in this country. And this is uh, incredibly dangerous for the United States of America right now. All of us have a responsibility to stand up and be counted on this issue.